Creators on the Come Up, hosted by yours truly, Alicia Way. You're now watching Creators on the Come Up. Yo, what is up? This is Alicia Way. Welcome to Content Ecosystem. Uh, on this channel, we're all about content creation and monetization. We're doing something new this week. Um, this is the first time I'm actually simulcasting using Restream. I see all the big creators using Restream. And uh, I, like I said before, I paid for it almost a year ago and I've been a bad steward with my money, just never used it. So I'm forcing myself to learn how to use Restream. And this is my inaugural show using Restream from so simulcasting to YouTube and Facebook at the same time. So uh, mis if any mistakes, take them all for love, uh, charge it to what they say, charge it to my heart, not my head or charge it to my head, not my heart, whatever, you know, you know how it goes. But uh, so, man, I'm super excited, man. Let's check out the chat real quick. We have a really, really special guest. As, as always, we always bring the dopest content creator to the platform. Um, so I'm really thinking y'all going to definitely feel this guest that we have today because he's just a, a special guy. So we're going to get him up very soon. Let's check out the chat real quick. Uh, shout out to DJ Strick, man. What's up, DJ Strick? We got DJ Strick in the building. Wow, that was my wife. She sneezed really loud that time. <laughs> we have uh, Brittany. What's up, Brittany? I see you. You be doing your thing, man. You definitely be doing your thing. She said, bro, I got a whole movie trailer intro. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You got to do it big. Why? I'm, I'm perspiring. Y'all know when I start live streaming, for some reason, I just, I start perspiring. So I got the wipes on deck. But so, yeah, I'm super excited to get into it, man. Um, once again, this show is sponsored by TubeBuddy. TubeBuddy is the number one Chrome extension for serious YouTubers. If you want to get your numbers up, get your subscribers up, get all the different, uh, you know, all the intel that you need, all the stats, all the data that you need so you can, you know, grow your YouTube channel, then definitely go download YouTube. I actually have a free trial uh, I'll put in the description. I got to get better. I got to figure out how to do that through Restream, put my all that in the description, but I'm going to figure that out. Also, it's uh, sponsored by Ecamm Live. Ecamm Live is like one of the best live streaming softwares for, and now it's native to the M1 chip for the Apple products. So it's the only, I think right now it's the only M1 native live streaming software. So it's super dope. I actually heard Ruslan today talking about he's going to be moving over from OVS to Ecamm Live, so that's super dope. More content creators are coming on to the platform, so that's super dope, sponsored by uh, Ecamm Live. So with all that out the way, we're going to go ahead and get our guests up right now. If you've seen the flyers and everything, you already know who he is. Uh, let's just get right into it, man. We live. We live. Yo, what it is, my guy, Belief. What's up, brother? Yo, what's <laughs> up, man? I, I'm, I feel like you are very set up for su success here, man. It is... The intro, everything is beautiful. I'm like, man, what is going on here, man? It's like I just landed on another planet. It's amazing. That's crazy. Like everybody who I bring on the show, that's the first thing they say. It's something similar to what you said. So, hey, that's big coming from you, brother. So, yeah, I know you live stream, right? I'm sure you do. I don't actually. I okay. don't live stream, but oh, wow. you make me want to do it so bad. This is amazing. <laughs> yeah, well, definitely. When you get into it, because you're going to get into it, because, you know, that's kind of the way it kind of works now, like doing the long form content, chopping it up to the short form. Then let me know. I got you, brother. You already know I got you, brother. So. I'm, I'm going to get on your nerves. That's 100 <laughs> percent. That's dope, man. So shout out to you, man. Um, like you're well documented online. Um, so uh, I've been following you for a while. Um, you know, I can I've been I've been watching like late night shows. You know how they do their intro. They'll bring their guests on and then they'll like intro them before the guests come on. So I'm I'm, I'm figuring out how to do that a little bit better because I would love to have a flow where I'm like bring it up now, you know, and then kind of kind of go over all your accolades and then bring you on. So you ain't got to do that. You know what I'm saying? So. I'm trying to figure that out, Brett, because I know I know if you're anything like me, you probably don't like talking about yourself. So um No. Nope. <laughs> I don't do it well. And that's because I have like a severe case of imposter syndrome. So oh. yeah, it's not something I'm good at, but yeah. Man, so imposter syndrome. I was actually literally just talking about that with Anna Hill, who is in the chat right now, and we were talking about imposter syndrome. Look, I'm just sweating, bro. Like I don't know what it is, bro. Like I got the fan going. You know what I'm saying? But I'm just sweating bullets right here, man. So, well, if you were ashy, it would be embarrassing. So, sweat <laughs> is way better than ash. So, thank you for not being ashy on this podcast. I'm I didn't slide, know. Slide. I didn't know that that was one of your many gifts, uh, comedian. <laughs> 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 that's dope though man so for anyone who does not know who belief is please give us a quick rundown of who you are bro and and uh let's, we'll just start right there okay cool so uh i am a uh, father by trade um so basically i make videos about 
how great it is to be a father, how much I learn about being a father. I started out in the hip hop community doing Christian hip hop with a lot of the people you may know and love. If you are familiar with that scene, um, I've done a lot of writing and, um, you know, supporting other members of, of the hip hop community. Um, I have a YouTube channel called Belief in Fatherhood. I have about 320,000 uh, sub subscribers there. Um, my wife and I have a podcast called How Married Are You? Um, I was recently in a film called Dads on Apple TV Plus, um, which uh, was an, was amazing. And so now I am really trying to help guide and equip men who uh, want to be great fathers. So, yeah, that is that's legit, man. Um, you know, and that's that's really honorable. And, and to be honest with you, and we're going to really dive into that, bro, because um, I think it's such a super dope niche. Can we call it a niche? You know what I'm saying? Like, what what, what do we call yeah. this thing here? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, um, yeah, that's my niche. Fatherhood is my niche. And then I use, uh, you know, all the other niches that I've been a part of to add to that. So uh, music is heavily involved in the, the the videos I make. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah, you can call it a niche for sure. That's what's up. All right. Cool, man. So I'm, I'm trying to get better at putting these. When you're a live streamer, that's one thing you got to get good at is like doing 10 things at one time. So um, talking to you, actively listening to you so I can respond coherently, but also reading comments. Right. And then popping them on the screen. So that's like and pressing them buttons. I see you pushing them <laughs> buttons, man. I know Bruh. you got a little. I'm over, something going on i'm over there. here bro like what's really going on but so i'm gonna go back to the beginning with me and with me anyway my introduction to belief right um i'm from orlando florida right and uh i came into so before i around 2012 is when i came into chh as far as the knowledge that it was even a thing right so before that i was doing just regular you know secular hip-hop had some pretty good success in florida but I, like 2012 i'm like started having a family i'm like i can't be out here talking about this stuff right so let me talk about some more righteous stuff so then i came into the christian hip-hop and you were one of the first artists that i heard about um, because orlando had a well still do 95.9 pretty decent radio station that's like played into millions of homes and cars and everything from like central Florida. And I heard this song and it was like, I got a lot of hate in my heart. I got to let it go. And I'm like, yo, what, huh? What? Like that? I thought this was a Christian hip hop radio station. This guy's talking about, I got a lot of hate in my heart, but I loved it though. Because like, I remember I just came from like that side of things, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So to hear that. And um, I was like, man, so I looked you up and it was you. And I was like, Oh, this, this is so lit. Was that, I don't even think, was that like a single single or, or like, was that a, a actual project or what was that? like? Man, I can't tell you where that song is. I don't even know where. <laughs> I just think I wrote it and I was performing it because it did well live. And wow. um, that was basically it. And so I, I don't know if I put it on a mixtape or something, but. <laughs> I couldn't find it, it on Spotify nowhere, bro. And I'm like, I went on a real. I, <laughs> he said, that's good. No. So I went on, on, a, on a real Easter egg hunt looking for this song. I finally found it on YouTube. Um, uh, under like jam jams jam, jam the, the hype. hype yeah they got it yeah. on like a compilation or something like that but uh i just that's what it was yeah yeah okay cool so yeah at the time like i said being where i just came from i'm hearing these lyrics and it's like you know uh, one part of the song you're saying like um, um something about like um forgiveness is like uh let when you like when you get free but you figured out that is i don't know what's, what's the lyrics like forgiveness yeah, uh, is like figuring out that when you get free, but you figured out that that, that was you that was bound by not yeah. forgiving or something like that. But it was just like, it was super deep, man. So, um, I, I like I said, uh, that was my intro to you and looked you up. And at the time, you know, you were doing some things and, you know, and from since then, I just was following your trajectory, your journey, super dope. And then from there, you know, it, it was a gap because like I said, I wasn't the biggest CHA's fanatic, but it was a gap. But For then sure. I, I came back into like the knowledge of you, during the YouTube era. And that was probably what would I say 2018, 2017? Like when did the YouTube kick off for you or when did you take it serious? I started doing YouTube in 2015. Um, right at the end of like, you know, which was like it was like segueing like the Dream Junkies era. Wow. Um, and so um I started doing it then and I, I took it seriously from the beginning, to be honest. Uh, but it really started to pick up around 2017. You know what I'm saying? Is when a lot of the goals that I set in 2015 that I set, like I was expecting them to happen in like 15 years, it actually happened like in two years. You know what I'm saying? And so um, it was a lot of hard work. But yeah, man, we, we took it very, very, very seriously. So. That's what's up. So 2015 is like when you like 
I'm finna do this YouTube thing, which is actually pretty early in the game from for a lot of YouTubers who I know are doing it right now. That 2015, 2016, 2017 era was when a lot of people started kind of catching on. Like I had the Onyx family. Have you ever heard of Onyx family? I have. Yeah, they man, they're I would I can legit say they're probably top three of the biggest black family YouTubers, right? They have mm -hmm. Between their two channels, they have 6 million subscribers. So, I, yeah, I had them on the show. And they said they started YouTube in 2017. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. In yeah. their first year doing YouTube, they were able to pay off all their debt, buy houses. I was just like, whoa, like, this is crazy. So, you know, you got in before that. That So, you know, a question that I definitely have to ask. Once again, you're definitely well documented. So a lot, a lot of this bits is already bits of pieces on the Internet if people want to do the research. But Take us through the mindset of kind of like the Christian hip hop coming out of that, the decision, right, to come. I won't even say come out of it because you still do music, but it's like to focus solely on like the YouTube, the family versus focus on pushing myself as a, a Christian hip hop artist or as a music artist. Like what was that mind frame, that mindset? Yeah, I think um, in the beginning, it was like I put out my first record, which was um, Red Pills, Black Sugar in 2014. And I was like really excited about it. But it was like it was like before like emo depressing rap was cool, like before, like, you know, what I'm saying like before it was cool to like NF, you know, what I'm saying like before it was it was that type of style. You know what I'm saying? And so it took a minute for it to catch on. And then like people wouldn't book me for shows because I was talking about suicide and depression. You know what I'm saying? And so um, crazy, crazy. Yeah. So like I was like, all right, well, let me introduce people to this like other side of me, which is like the fun dad side. Maybe I'll get booked for more shows. And then it was like my wife had asked me this question and she's like, we're like laying in the bed and she's like, hey, like, what's your five year plan? You know what I'm saying? And I was kind of like, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like whatever God has for us type thing. And she was wow. just like, I trust you with my family and my future. And you don't have five years planned out. Wow. And then rolled over and went to sleep. And well, I hold could on, not hold sleep. on, hold on. That was your wife that said that? My wife. Wow. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I, you know what I'm saying? And so she, you know how it is, man. Like being married to um, you know, a woman like my wife, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> um, is a blessing because like it's like they hold you accountable to what you are capable of. You wow. know what I'm saying? Love and that. so she asked me that question and it kind of like was like, I don't know what I want to do. And then um, you know, it turns out that we actually really I really started to like kind of become obsessed with like my plan. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I have direction. I'm trying to have purpose and I don't have, and I'm expecting this wife to follow me and these people to follow me and I don't have a plan. And so then I started to just kind of focus on the plan, which was, I wanted to tell people how great it was to be a father. Wow. And that's exactly what I did. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, where are the people, where are their attention? You know what I'm saying? It's like all the attentions on the internet. And so that's where I was going to put my time and attention. And so, because, uh, you know, I don't I don't put out videos every day. I don't I don't do a lot of fluff material. My stuff is a little bit more deep and involved because I put so much time into the music and all that stuff because I want it to feel like a slow roast. Wow. Uh, but yeah, like it was me also realizing that I'm you can't really define me as a rapper, like a rapper is something I do, not who I am. Yeah. Um, by, by trade, like I'm more of a storyteller. And so yeah. the medium can change. Right. You can yeah. change the medium. I'm a storyteller, whether I'm drawing a picture uh, saying a speech, writing a book, ri rhyming or, or doing video, you know what wow. I'm saying? And so I'm a storyteller, not an MC. And so people got kind of irritated when I was like, yeah, I'm not going to be doing the dream jockeys anymore. We, we off that I'm gone. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I don't well you know I, I i wasn't a dream junkie fanatic i know y'all had like super fans so you know I, I i can't imagine that that was how it went though like i'm off this i'm going i'm pretty sure it was a little bit different than that no or was it like abruptly like i'm out <laughs> no it was it was definitely a transition like hey this is the last album like good religion gotcha. is the last album yeah and i'm, I'm yeah. done we, we off that but i was the one i was the catalyst to be like hey i, I ain't doing this no more you that's what's saying? up Man, well, so you said so much that we have to unpack, but I got to go back to this, bro, because um, being that, you know, we have similar trajectories. Like, so with the wife, she's like, you don't have a five year plan, rolled over and went to sleep on you. Like, let me, I, I believe I seen in the interview at one point that you were like a stay at home dad at one point or like, so was, was she the main one, like, like holding down the fort, like, you know, working and stuff like that? Yeah. So we had like, um, you know, we had childcare, right? Childcare was like 400 bucks a week. Or crazy, crazy. Like that. crazy. You know what I'm saying? Oh, 400 so, a week. You got You was getting was off. 400 a week. You was getting off easy, bro. <laughs> 400 a week. No, yeah, it was 400 a week. It was like 1200 a month. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. 
Yeah. So we had that's that was our child care. And then we got pregnant with another kid. She got pregnant with another kid. And we were like, yo, she was like, well, this 400, you know what I'm saying? And we about to turn into 800 real fast because and she was like, look, I'm a math teacher. I can I can work, you know what I'm saying, and make enough money. And you could work from home and make money doing music. Yeah. So let's try that. And I was like, I don't know if I'm feeling that because it sounds boring. No, listen, little did I know. Man, listen, though, I got to step down on that, bro, because very similar situation with, with me. You know what I'm saying? There's been times okay. where my wife was like, the breadwinner, like legit, you know what I'm saying? And not, I have to just honor your wife on that note because not many women would do that. Not many women would be like, Hey, I'm gonna go right now, just hold it down financially. And you know, you make the dream work. Right. And, and we just, we're just going to pray that this, this works out for you. And for you, of course, and for many brothers like us, it, it actually does work out if you have a solid plan, things like that. But yo, how dope is that, that your wife like helped you kind of, kind of formulate that type of plan? Like, Shout out to her, man. Yeah, man. I mean, my wife, you know, she does a lot of things like that. You know what I'm saying? Like she is the one that initially gave me the the unction to stay at home. And, you know, um, she allowed me to put our family on YouTube. She allowed me to, you know what I'm saying? Like just kind of, and it wasn't even the dream. Like it was just kind of like, I'm just going to see what happens here. And then after I started doing it, there became so many whys. Like so many people were like, yo, I haven't talked to my dad in eight years wow. and i i watched him and i and I, I mean I, I watched your video and i gave him a call or like wow I'm, I'm 12 years old i wanted to be a dad i never wanted to be a dad or have kids and now i want to like so you're you're like you're talking about like reconciliation and generational and then like i'm going to shows and i'm sitting there wow. kind of during the dream junkies air and i'm kind of like what am i doing here you know what i'm saying wow. like wow. why am i out here trying to like <laughs> impress these people and sweat and like get you know be all hot and make this music that people get tired of like a week after it's out yeah you know what i'm saying and so yes. i was just like i am off this so my wife really you know believed in me and once she once she she wasn't like gung-ho about it at first but like once she saw the response from the people they were like yo she was like yo whatever you need to do, do it. You know That's what I'm saying? Because she, she saw the fruit, you know? That's and lit. then I was just like, cool. And so she quit her job in 2017 and it was basically all me and we were not making enough money, but Faith. by the grace of God, man. Yeah. Faith. Nah, wow. seriously, like God, like, you know what I'm saying? We went from like the, the summer of 2017, we went from 20,000 subscribers to 70,000, you know what I'm saying? And wow. that's when like the brand deals started coming in and now brand deals are pretty much 80% of our income. Wow, brand deals are eighty percent. So the 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 rev the ad revenue that's just is that what twenty percent, ten percent? What what is the ad revenue fall? Not even ad revenue. Come on, bro, don't flex, bro. The ad revenue adds up, bro. <laughs> nah, no, 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 no. We we don't have we don't get a lot of money from ads, man. Oh, because um, the get, the children the children content. Oh, well, it's it's you gotta like in order to make money off of ads, you gotta be super duper consistent, and you have to you have to kind of flex a lot, and your audience retention has to be super high. Gotcha. And so, um, and also you kind of gotta talk about what's popping and 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 you know what's trending. You know what I'm saying? And that's yeah. never really been us. Yeah. And so, um. I mean, I'm not saying we're not gonna change and adjust to that, but ad revenue is. Less than one percent of our income. Whoa, that now I've never heard that. I, I've always heard, you know, like listening to Sean Cannell and these other cats. I've always heard it's going to be somewhere between twenty, you no, know, ten to thirty percent of the uh, the total income. So that's that's lit, though. I love it. I mean, that shows me a different model. You know, a different model of eighty percent brand revenue. So, um, man, we I, I didn't even mean to get into that um, yet, but uh, so all right, let's go back a little bit. So the 2017, 20,000 subscribers, it jumps to 70,000. And mm -hmm. she, so, so wifey came home on a 20, like to around a 20,000 mark. That's crazy. That's. Yeah. It was not a joint discussion. <laughs> <laughs> so she was like, I, I held it down for two years. So it's your turn. So go hang well, on. She, held, she didn't hold it down for two years. She held it down our entire marriage. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So she held it down for seven years because wow. she was making the majority of the income. You know wow. what I'm saying? Yeah. And so I was kind of like, <laughs> what are you doing? What, are you going to look for another job? Or you, what's was, happening? you was getting comfy, bro. You was getting comfy. 
<laughs> well, it wasn't even I was getting comfy. I just was kind of like, I don't know how to do this. Like, I don't yeah. know how to make money off of this. Like, yeah, you yeah. talking about make, going from making like, you know, I had Patreon. I was probably making like, I don't know, fifteen hundred, twelve hundred dollars or something like that yeah. off of Patreon. You know what I'm saying? Our monthly expenses is like five thousand. So it's wow. like, yeah, it, you know, it was a lot of like work. You know what I'm saying? And just being like, well, I'm gonna just keep making videos. You know what I'm saying? And <laughs> um, and figuring it out. But man, um. I'm super grateful for my wife, you know what I'm saying, for making a lot of the decisions she's made um, and putting me in a position to, you know, really prove to her, you know, what is capable, what I'm capable of. I'm telling you that that alpha male really stands up when 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 that type of situation comes in, because it's like eat or be eight type stuff. So I know you just like, did you just double down on the videos? Like, what was your from that point on? Like, I know it was a lot of prayer. I know that I know it was a lot Mm -hmm. of faith. But like, what was your your main you know, technique to really just hunker down and get it going from that point. Um, man, I, I don't even remember. It was just kind of like I was blind. Like I, it was like I had I, my focus was like zeroed in, yeah. and I was just like, <laughs> I'm just gonna make mad videos. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I'm gonna try to make the best content ever. But it was like it was all happening in the right way. You know what I'm saying? And I'm having conversation with friends, and they're kind of like. Yeah, man, we make like five hundred thousand a, a year off of uh, uh for sponsorships. Wow, you know what I'm saying? And I was just like, "What?" You know what I'm saying? Like that's impossible. You know what I'm saying? And so, like, it really was just about like, I don't know, like just working, man. Like I can't really say any one thing that changed. It just was like I worked. Yeah. You just really yeah really hard, and it was just me. I didn't I didn't pay nobody. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It was just me. So who who are you then, seeing? Who are you seeing at that time that was like killing it on the YouTube in the YouTube space? Um, you know, there's a lot of people killing it, like Sean Cano was yeah. killing it. Um, you know what I'm saying? Uh Gabe and Babe, the Daily Davidsons, like a lot of families uh were killing it very well. Uh Maze Lee was killing it. Like every like there's a lot of different families, you know what I mean, who were doing well. And um, you know what I'm saying? Like I don't know how much they made, but it was like people were doing pretty good. Yeah. Um, I I definitely had like a um you know, like I, I just th- I had to see it to believe it. You know what I'm saying? Like I had to see someone be like, yo, I'm making I'm I'm, I'm providing for my family off this. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's what's up, man. Uh, question said, did it make you feel any kind of way that your wife was making the bulk of the income? Did you ever have any type of like feels like, hold on now, what's going what's really going on right now? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, like I, I felt inadequate, but also didn't feel like I had a purpose. Like I didn't feel like I was supposed to do music like my my job doing music was to support the dude I was rolling with. You know what I'm saying? Like I started out as a DJ. So I was a part of, I was following his five-year plan, his 10-year plan. I wasn't focusing on myself, you know what I'm saying? So um, really it made me feel some type of way, but it was like, what what else was I going to do? I didn't know. Like, I just was like, I don't know how to do this. And so um, I was like, okay, well, I'm going to just be the best rapper I, I could be. And then really try to start like making money off of music and so what happened was, <laughs> this is funny. So what happened was I started making money off of music. And then it was like, I started making the exact amount we needed to make in order for her to come home from work. Wow. And so um, I'm like, all right, babe. Like, but mind you, because we're doing music, I had to be gone for like, like a month or three weeks. You know what I'm saying? Traveling. And so she was like, yeah. So I'm traveling, I'm traveling around, I'm sleeping on floors, I'm sleeping in cars, I'm sleeping in Airbnb, in Airbnbs. I'm, I'm set, I'm, sh- you know, uh, sharing a hotel with like five people, like is is rough. Right. And we're on the road and we're doing our thing. And then like, um, like I started like picking up bad habits. Like I'm like smoking black and miles and Swisher <laughs> sweets and like drinking, you know what I'm saying? I, I like, never, I never would have thought that, bro. I never would have thought that. <laughs> oh, it was, it was rough. You it know was what getting saying? real it's, out there. It was getting real. And so I get home and I make this money and I'm looking at my wife. I'm like, I did it. I'm like, okay, so I was gone for this long. How much money, you know, she's like, you know, I missed you. You know, so I'm like, I missed you too. She's like, well, I'm like, how much money would it like make sense for me to leave and then come back? So if say if I left for two weeks and brought home like 20,000, is that good? And she's like, eh, I'm like, okay, okay, okay. Well, what if I brought home like 50,000? Like, what's the goal? Right. And she's like, uh, I'm like, what about a hundred thousand dollars? Like, what if I brought home a hundred thousand dollars a month, right? Wow. And I'm just thinking, I'm just trying to help like gauge my level of success here. And she's like, <laughs> Well, basically, what you're asking me is, and my wife is super hard hitter with these one-liners. She goes, <laughs> basically, basically, what you're asking me is, 
how much money do you have to make to turn me into a single mother? Dang. Hold on, bro. And I was just like. <laughs> she hit you with the bomb, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was just like, all right. So I'm going to quit rapping because that's not working, obviously. Not working. And I really did feel good about it. But you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm rapping with her baby brother, John Gibbs. Yeah. Who yeah. Is Shout out to John Gibbs. A rapper's man. rapper. Yeah. Like, yeah. Amazing, amazing artist. Clever. Yeah. I'm, I'm Everything walking, in, I'm walking in Walmart the other day and I see him in the headphone section on like a poster. I'm like, this guy, look at this guy. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. He's got, he, he had it all at the point, at that point, you know what I'm saying? It's like really hard to, I mean, like I definitely was keeping up cause I, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm a, I'm a crazy about the art, but like, it just was like, man, obviously this dude has something that I don't have and yeah. I don't necessarily want. Yeah. You know wow. what I'm saying? No, that, like, no, that's the part you didn't want it. Um, because yeah. bro, like you can't, you can't, you can't down your bars, bro. Like I've seen so many interviews where like people was like shouting you out as their top five, top three CHH lyricists and stuff like that. So I, I wouldn't necessarily downplay the bars, but I totally feel you where it's like, what's really more important. You know what I'm saying? Like the fam, the wife are out here trying to, you know, get this other bag. So absolutely, bro. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, you know, I'm really trying to gauge what success looks like. Um, I feel like I'm doing an okay job of that. Um, and you know like i did feel some type of way in the beginning about like my wife making more money and being that person but at the same time like now i understand that like it's almost like a give and take you know what i'm saying and so i don't i don't i'm i'm not like a i'm not like someone who's kind of like i gotta be making all the money and that's part of my identity you know what i'm saying but yeah, like right yeah. now i have a plan and i'm i'm sticking to the plan you know that's what i'm saying up. That's what's yeah. up, man. I love that, man. That's dope, man. Wife, wife with the with the one liners. I'm I'm big on one liners because I'm I'm not with the arguing. You know what I'm saying? I'm not with the going back and forth. So I try to think of what is this one liner I can say that can just interject exactly what I need this person to feel right now. So I, I believe your wife is probably on that same tip. Like, listen, <laughs> we're not going to be going back and forth. So you trying to turn me into a single mother out here in these streets? Okay, that's what's up. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying. Um. Yeah, it was it was it was definitely hard, man. You know, we had a, a very small place we lived in, um, no backyard, three kids. You know what I'm saying? Um, and it was like, you know, that's when I started when I, that last album I put out called "In Fatherhood." I made this song called "We Gonna Make It Out," wow. and I was just like sitting there, like talking about how broke I was and how like bad it made me feel. You know wow. what I'm saying? Like I can't even go anywhere that I want to go to. You know what I'm wow. saying? Like I'm depending on. Uh, people support like i'm selling my verses for 50 dollars. yeah bro bro feature what... sales please <laughs> i need to buy diapers like bro come on man been there like, dog you, like feature a... sales is where i was at man <laughs> you can't live you can't Terrible. live there all right so let me ask you this bro because time is flying it's 9 30 well it's 9 30 over here when was the epiphany like when did it hit you on some like, yo, this YouTube thing is actually happening. Like it's working. Like when, when, when was that moment? 2017. And like, what was the incident that happened? Was it a big brand deal that came or was it just the fulfillment of man? I'm with my family, my wife. I'm, I see them every day. I'm home and I'm doing what I love, so to speak. And it's working. Like what was the epiphany moment that made you be like, yes, this is, it's working out now. When was that? The, the top, I mean, things have been happening so amazingly. So the timeline kind of escapes me, but I'm going to tell you as best as I remember. Um, the summer of 2017, um, I, the fall, I shot a picture of Theo, my oldest son, and I put it on my Instagram and I tagged like shot by iPhone. That picture by wow. the summertime got picked up by Apple and was like, yo, wow. we want to use this photo in the world gallery and i'm like what is that and i'm like what is a world gallery you know what wow. i'm saying they're like no it's gonna be on 90 billboards in like 70 countries or i mean in uh 20 countries or something like that so i was like all right cool and i got paid very little money for that i can't say how much i got paid yeah, you know what yeah. i'm saying but it was very little money so um i went on like uh i i went on like gary v show and i asked him a question and i'm like Yo, I got this thing. I'm trying to make the most out of this. I'm a father. I'm trying to be like, you know, like, you know, a leader in the fatherhood space. And I don't know what to do. I'm trying to make the most out of this billboard opportunity with Apple. And he's like, uh, I think you should go get a job and go work for someone. 
You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, well, how, how did you sound just like him, bro? You got too many gifts, dog. You got a you're a comedian, <laughs> you're a ventriloquist, you're a person. Man, I'm sitting there like Gary V. Are you kidding me? You know what I'm saying? Like, excuse me. And so basically. Um, I was like, absolutely not. I will not. I have three children and like, this is all I have. And so I'm kind of like, Gary V don't know about, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like about like what God is giving me and God is telling me to do. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So like, what does that have to do with anything? So I just started running, bro. You know wow. what I'm saying? And after that, that next summer, I ended up being, I ha ended up having my first Ted talk. That Ted talk went crazy. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And so after that, it was like, oh man, it was like I had the juice. Wow. It was like, and then you know, we put out the the good religion album. The album did so well. And then I just dropped my 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 latest album, and that's what pissed me off. Yo, <laughs> I dropped in fatherhood. I dropped that record 2017. Wow. And my first check was eighteen hundred dollars. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Let's go. <sighs> <laughs> that that was amazing but it what it didn't, couldn't even co cover my bills and it took it, me two years to write it exactly wow so i was so like mad and like yeah. oh y'all gonna get out my way you know wow. what i'm saying and this was like the dog came out then the dog, the dog came out man <laughs> the dog came out and that's what it was man that's lit bro I, I love that type of stuff like you know um it's like I, I root for certain people like i just get their vibes and stuff it's like I definitely love to see people like you winning out here because it's like it really represents a whole class of other people who like really gifted, really talented. But at the same time, they go through their struggles. And I see so many people get frustrated and they just kind of like give up. You know what I'm saying? And, and just to see yeah. you like just get down to the nitty gritty and just push through. I think that's just amazing, bro. So and shout out to you, man. So where are we at? All right. 935. We got a little bit of time. So. All right. So let's kind of keep the story going. So. Uh, 2017, 2018, you had, I guess you had like your breakout year then. I can truly say that you were one of the first ones, I believe, that came out of the CHH space into the YouTube space and did well. Now you see Ruslan, you see all these other guys doing it and they're killing it. But it's like you were a trendsetter. I think uh, DJ Chosen once said that. He said, uh, where, where's this comment at? Uh, he said uh, something about, oh yeah, let me go to this comment because it was, it was true. Um, he was a, a Christian hip hop DJ. Actually, he said being a trailblazer in a unique niche was it and encourage encouragement and or hindrance to not have many examples, models to follow. You know what I'm saying? So, oh, that was a question. That was a question. Yeah. Oh, my bad. Yeah. I mean, I, I know DJ Chosen, right? So like DJ, DJ Chosen one, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that, that's Chosen, I, right? I, I don't think he goes by that no more, but that's that's what it was. OK, yeah, right. Yeah. But I, I know him. Right. So. You're asking if it was an encouragement um, or a hindrance to not have any examples. I mean, I, I think I just I, I'm just now seeing it as an encouragement. And the reason why, man, is because, right, my dad had joint custody over the summertime. Right. So I saw my dad in the summers. So I've always been longing for like fatherhood and people to like lead me, please help me, guide me. And the, and the truth is, like I've gotten where I'm at right now. Um, not, not, of course not on my own, you know what I'm saying? But without like a father figure to help like a mentor, which kind of is irritating to me. You know what I'm saying? Cause I'm kind of like, none of y'all told me how to freaking, you know, like do payroll. Like this is hard. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> don't, don't why would you not tell me, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is so difficult. This CEO yeah. <laughs> life. Right. And so I'm kind of like, man, like none of y'all could have, nobody said nothing. All these oh, people I know, everybody, everybody out here, CEOs, no one talking about payroll. Bruh. Right. So I'm kind of like, I'm irritated. So then like, <laughs> I think now I, I thought it was a hindrance and I thought it was something that was going to slow me down to keep me, but I'm just kind of like, at this point, I'm like, man, ain't no, I'm not, I'm not looking for somebody to come and rescue me. I'm not looking for someone to come in and get down with what I'm trying to do. You know what I'm wow. saying? And so, um, you know, I said it in the, in the greeting, man, like when I, when I wrote that record, um, you know, it seems like everybody's on somebody else's vision. If they don't get my vision, if they don't get my vision, I just love them from a distance. You know wow. what I'm saying? Like, wow. I, like don't keep, don't keep people around cause they in your circle. If they don't add to your center, then that can really hurt you. Wow. I spend a lot of time chasing people who fly high, but let's be honest, the inner circle is the bullseye. So wow. like, it's, it's all about who's in that inner circle. You wow. know what I'm saying? 
And so oh. I'm not trying to find someone to lead me anymore. Like I'm led by the I'm led by the Lord. You know what I'm saying? I got a really cool community of peers. I got other dudes who are trying to figure it out with me, but nah, you know what I'm saying? Like if somebody, if some yeah. if I if eventually somebody comes along and they say, like, yo, you're an example, let's let's you know what I'm saying, like I can help you, then cool. But most of the time when people hit me up, it's kind of like, man, I I love the mentor. I love to guide you. Hey, can you promote my podcast? Wow. What? You know what I'm saying? I'm kind of like, ah. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Like now I'm at the stage now where I have to pay for a mentor. Wow. That's like crazy. that's where I'm at. Like yeah. in order to get shepherded by someone, because they're going to save me a lot of money. Like I'm going to have to pay that person a salary. Wow. I heard you. I heard you say something somewhere. I don't know if it was Clubhouse. You said you have like a staff of like so many people. How many people on your staff? Um, One, two, three, four five crazy. and then we have we have five and then we have uh four contractors crazy that's crazy so that brings on a, a different level too of like you know like i don't know like knowing that you're kind of in somewhat responsible for someone's paycheck type deal like yo like when like when did when did you make that transition into like straight up boss boss like i'm i'm, I'm writing checks out here when was that like 2019 or no it was this past august wow <laughs> yeah this is past august man um uh, it's been quite a journey these past this past year uh, i'd say since june has been the hardest time of my marriage time of my career wow like even right now it's hard like everything is like brick wall brick wall brick wall you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying like you're just trying to like bust down the walls and get through it's it's very yeah. it's a very challenging time yeah. but i i just know that like you know, fighting for the small things, finding the fundamentals, finding the rhythms and the um and the habits, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Um, to make the right decisions will will see me through, you know what I'm saying? Um, but I mean like I got like two therapists right now, you know what I mean? <laughs> it was three, <laughs> three if you count Jesus, three. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like for real, like you know what I'm saying? And and but it's like I'm out here and bro, I, I feel like I don't know what I'm doing, but it's working. That's crazy. Love it, you know, love it. Yeah, my, um, yeah, that's crazy. I was going to say something, but check this out. I got a question. How many branches of like, what does the business look like? Like, uh, what is the branches? Like, okay, you got the YouTube channel, but how does that branch off into like music? Or I know you said you had a film company or a media company. Like, what are, what are your branches of business now? What does that structure look like? I'm going to get this to you, some of it, because you kind of getting a little nosy. So I'm, I'm going to, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, all right. I'm well, just joking. Look, 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 look. So I have a parent company okay. um, um, that we're setting up, right? So Belief in Fatherhood um, has three different, like, you know, purposes. You okay. know what I'm saying? Um, one is equipping fathers. That's what we do here with the with videos, um, uh, giving hope to mothers and inspiring children. Right. And so we need a parent company to kind of take over that because um, belief of fatherhood is becoming very focused on the equipping father side. But uh, there's belief. Right. The the dad influencer. Right. And then there is, uh, you know, belief in music, which is, um, you know, the music aspect of what we do. You okay. know what I'm saying? Um, there's belief in creation, which goes into the consulting and stuff like that. Oh, wow. Right. And then we have, um, you know, uh, Frank Puppet, which is a children's arm. Right. Um, and it's a puppet show that I've been working on for years. Um, and How Married Are You is giving hope to mothers. And he, my wife has her own brand as well. Nice. And so um, Belief in Fatherhood also serves as a production company. Um, but um, we haven't like really flexed that muscle yet. We're currently in the hopes of like finding a building like we rent this office space here yeah but we're looking for a building that i will be able to facilitate all the things that we want to do wow so that's yeah. what's up man i think kev on stage kind of went that route like he has a building now and a production studio and what where, where exactly are you are you i know you're on the west coast is it yeah i'm in san diego area so north county um kev on stage is about two hours oh and, nice uh, north of me yeah are you in the same area as ruslan is that kind of where he where he is yeah we live like 12 <laughs> minutes it's 18 minutes away from each other that's crazy that's dope man so yeah man i'm, I'm loving that man let's look, let's read a couple of comments here um and then you know I, I i want to go back to something that you said that was i think was just phenomenal and you said that they didn't teach us about payroll they didn't and it's so much stuff that you know and, and we can't i don't want to get into like bashing our parents and you know all that it ain't it's not about that but it does make you think like 
was it so hard to teach me about financial literacy or credit or, or payroll or business credit or, you know, like wh- why was that not a conversation? And I think about, because I know from my parents anyway, man, they was just trying to make it. They was just trying to focus on getting the bread on the table right now. You know what I'm saying? They couldn't yeah, think man. about yeah. like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Our future, but we have that, uh, we have that unique vantage point that where we actually can, because we have the power of the internet, we can leverage our, we can leverage time differently to where we can now begin to teach our children about those things. Like, what, um, what, what are your thoughts on that? Like, have you started setting up things like for you? I'm sure you have, but like, what is your, like, what is your, like on your priority list of man, my children must know this, or I have to instill this, or I have to set this up for them. What are some of those like ideas that you're throwing around? Well, um, so we, we have been working on like a, a form and a plan to like, you know stipend out the kids and stuff like that because they are in the videos and they should be paid as employees you know what i'm saying um and so we are teaching them financial literacy in the best way we know how and i think that what what we're helping them understand is that like like last night we did a shot we did a shoot at the beach with 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 the homie george over here and um and, and the rest of the team and basically we spent time at the beach like making content for new merch that we have coming out you know what i'm saying and so when my son there was there was like yo i thought we was coming to the beach to play you ain't tell us we just going to you know what i'm saying and then so every now and then i have to remind them like yo these are income streams wow right the merch that we have is income streams yeah you know what i mean when target sends us something that's income streams wow you know and so we have multiple streams of income like that is super important for us to understand you know what i mean so if we're writing a book that's an income stream if dad has to go speak that's an income stream yeah and so i'm i have uh six or seven different streams of income that i'm working with currently you know what i'm saying so i'm trying to teach my son the value of that now they reap the benefits off of that because they're in commercials and they get paid you know what i'm saying and so they already have like you know retirement funds and stuff like that that you know at their age now you know what i'm saying which is they're going to be super set up for success but it's all about stewardship and so i feel like there is a there's a point like i'm not trying to be like belief the business teacher you know what i'm saying (laughs) but the influence of life is different because we can write off a huge portion of our lifestyle because wow. it, it it is a part of our brand you know yeah. what i'm saying and so i'm i'm very confused in these streets but i'm working hard <laughs> to understand that's for sure you can't write off too much because i did that last year and i went to go buy a house they was like well you don't really make that much because you wrote everything off you idiot so i'm like oh, I, didn't, <laughs> I, I didn't know that i thought i didn't know that i had to not for write sure. everything off so yeah but you know one thing that the onyx family said that i thought was so profound um, when they came on the show was they said, you know, when they were out working, right. Um, the husband and the father, I mean, the husband and the wife, and, you know, they said at one point they felt like the family unit had been broken. And that was kind of like, um, the, the gift and the curse of the modern day. And he said something about YouTube that he loved was when he, his family sat down and they had a meeting in the house and they said, man, we're going to do this YouTube thing and we're going to do it 100. Right. And they had a meeting with the kids and something similar to what you said, you know, like they have it structured to where the kids are employees and you know, they have tax benefits doing that as well anyway. But oh, yeah. he said that it brought the family unit back together. They're spending time together. They're like working together. And then he actually went back and deep on some Bible stuff and was like, that's how it was back then. Like the families were, they worked together. It was like, you know, if the, the dad was a farmer, then the boys were farmers and they worked together and, and things like that. And that had got taken away when kids got shipped off to school and parents got shipped off to work. So like to you, like, what are your thoughts on that? D- did you see a, a tightness in your family unit when you guys like started coming together with the YouTube channel and started working together? Like how had that changed your family dynamic? Yeah. I mean, like I'm, I'm, I'm like a, a real bougie storyteller. So I'm like, yo, how's the lighting? Like, let's make sure we're <laughs> shooting, you know what I'm saying? At this format and, you know, asking people like, Hey, what's the right codec to shoot at? And what lens should I get? And, um, my, I have a family full of creators, you know what I'm saying? Um, and so my son, who's eight, has started vlogging. You know wow. what I'm saying? Hey, guys, welcome to my channel. My name's Steel. I hope you like this video. I saw Today that. we have a lizard in I our saw, house. I saw we that. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And I'm just like, yo, what is happening? And he's just catching it off me, which is kind of weird because I'm like, bro, I, I didn't know I was raising this child. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know he was watching me like this. Yes. Um, but, man, I, I like commend families who are 100% on because it's like, when you receive comments and backlash and people 
you know, uh, sending death threats to you because of what you do. You know what I'm saying? Like that is a huge turnoff. You know wow. what I'm saying? And wow. So that's stuff that we've had to deal with and we've moved, you know, changed houses because people were outside of our house asking for pictures and you know what I'm saying? Wow. Like weird stuff like that. And so, um, uh, yeah, man, like I, I, I hope that, you know what I'm saying? Like people would decide to choose to share their lives in a way like we get to read the bible right like hmm. we know intimate things about a lot of the people who lived back then because everything was well documented wow. and so right now it's not a very it's not a very documentary style life right we are more in tune with uh reality tv wow. and using that as our standard in instagram using that as our standard and that is just not real so um you know by showing our lives and how we are you know what i'm saying and like yo sometimes like man i'm going through a rough time as a father i'm really going through it and that is okay and i would be lying to you and making you feel like if i was perfect then you'd have to be perfect too wow so um, i think sharing your life is something super important man and people don't do enough of it that's crazy how much of how much like i heard you in the clubhouse you said that uh the way you do your storytelling is basically you work the story backwards right you go you start shooting and then something will happen throughout the day and you're like okay that's the story and now i have to formulate the pieces around it i thought that was just genius because so many people they try to make the story congruent like from the from the wake up to go to sleep and then when they get yeah. and it's not working out but you you find the moment throughout the day and then build your story around that which is just so super dope man um but let me ask you this how much of your life do you feel comfortable showing you know what i'm saying if something happens like because and, and i gotta preface that because i have a thing like i, I don't want to feel like i'm like I don't want to say pimping my kids or pimping my family. That's the wrong word, but I don't want to feel like I'm like exploiting, right? Like exploiting. Yeah. Yeah. So like, where's the, like for you and where's the line or how do you deal with that? Yeah. I, I think in the beginning I was kind of like, anybody could get it. <laughs> Who, who's doing something funny. I'm filming. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> in the beginning. Cause I was thirsty. You know what I'm saying? I was a little thirst bucket out here, but now, um, I realize that people don't want to be on camera like that. You know what I'm saying? So we sh we sh usually film one day a week, um, and it just it's just one day. You know what I'm saying? It's usually a Tuesday or some pickup shots on Thursday, and that's it. You know what I mean? And it's usually for like four hours. Hey, would you say it's like four hours? Four hours on like a Tuesday, and then yeah. like maybe another couple maybe an hour or so on a thursday this week like weeks like this are crazy because we got a merch drop in a couple weeks nice on the 15th and so we're like shooting like like all these like all the new merch and stuff like that wow. and like we're spending so much time shooting so um we're a little bit to this week is kind of rough you know what i mean yeah, yeah uh but yeah i used to be like you know shoot one part and then sh film everything else backwards now it's like you know, I'll find the story anywhere and I can make the story out of anything. Yo, you know you, what I'm saying? Like, I'll find the story in the edit. Your storytelling is wow. And also your editing, Thanks, because the editing has to go with the storytelling. I remember, so I got a family full of locks. Like, we all have locks, my children. Beautiful. And when you cut your son's locks off, it's not, it wasn't just like that you cut them off. It was the whole story behind it. Like anybody who's watching right now, go to YouTube and wa I believe it's the, like the main video on your channel right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go watch the first video on his channel. Bro, I was like in tears on some, like on some tear stuff. But your son, he he wanted to be himself. Like and we sometimes yeah. we project what we want on our man. Man, Ooh, that was deep. That's bro. a sermon, man. <laughs> no, that's, that's you, sermon. bro. That's all you, bro. What you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> but but the way but the way it's translating to you, you know what I'm saying? Like you gonna have to make that trip eventually. Wow. One yeah. of them. You know what I'm saying? Don't, don't, One don't say that, like, dog. Hey, don't man, say that, hey, dog. <laughs> Take these off me, bro. I ain't you. You know what I'm saying? And people are looking at me like, man, that's what you're doing with your bald head, trying to live a cancer through your son. That's why you can't grow no hair now. You know what I'm saying? And so like I'm like living it double fold, but like I got to write a song. You know what I'm saying? I got to collaborate with someone from Australia, Saskia, who was a part of that song. Wow. Growing up fast. I got to allow my uh the videographer to do his thing, the photographer to do his thing. I got wow. to um allow rj our graphic designer to make art you know wow. and i got to like we celebrated life in a really real way man it was and that, beautiful and you can't you can't you can't fabricate my son being nervous to see his own mother because she's never seen him without his hair man i'm getting goosebumps bro don't do that you know bro. what i'm saying you can't <laughs> fabricate that like you know what i mean and that's the real life we're talking about that's the stuff that's kind of like 
yo, you don't realize. And some people who were like, were saying like, like I was saying something like, yo, like don't like the transition that my son was trying to make. Like I was preventing because of how I saw him. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And some people from the transgender community that related to like them. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So you're talking about like it's all in the fields, man. So mm. I'm, I'm God is so good, but, man. But, the way he be. And not trying to go this way, but then that's how you come up with Lil Nas X's. And now he's mad, bro. He's all I'm getting from him is anger and frustration, and he has to get it out now. You know what I'm saying? But that's okay. <laughs> like we, not, you know, what I'm saying like we don't we don't trip off a of Lil Nas X's. Like we 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 grew up in the era of Marilyn Manson's. Like. You know what I'm saying? Thank like you. Like y'all you know, acting like this is something like, new under the sun. Like why y'all get so Lil triggered Nas, over stuff? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like Lil Nas X is is amazing because of the fact that he knows what triggers people. And wow. He got your he got our attention right when he needed to. The the country song he did, uh, Old Town Road, that was the same type of vibe. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like yes. I've never seen a black kid on a country record like that Man. ever. You know what I'm saying? And, and kill so whatever he has to do has to be has to be shocking and so you fell for it that is you crazy love you that mad. man we're gonna we're gonna pull this conversation back in but i had i had a good question to ask you in my six minutes that i had and i can't even remember it now because we went a whole different route but my bad bro no nah, you good bro I'm, I'm loving i'm loving the conversation and uh so all right i guess we can go this route what's what's next i know you say you had a merch drop man and, and some other things coming up like what can we expect from the whole brand and the brands that you have now bro yeah so um right now what we're working on um is uh the merch drop that's coming out april 15th it's called the purpose collection um it's celebrating people you know knowing their purpose living in their purpose and god giving them um the 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 power to move in their purpose the strength and dignity uh to keep on keeping on and then um you know after that we're looking to drop our e-course which is um the art of fatherhood oh love e-course and Love so that. we're helping men transition into fatherhood well. Wow. And so that's teaching them how to care for their spouses. Wow. Uh, you know, um, you know, as they, you know, are pregnant and stuff like that. That's crazy. Um, you know, my next move is I'm, I'm about to be really active on Twitter with Frank Puppet, um, which is uh, a passion that I've always had. And, you know, I used to love Sesame Street, man. And I have this passion to turn like Sesame, like, you know make a, a version of that a style of that yeah but it's just like it's full of bars like so i want to i want to put out a couple records you know what i'm saying and, and that's you know, that's out. where i was going that's where i was going yeah. the music so i noticed that you do a song is it a song for each video or a song for each what is it because i think yeah, it's, it's pretty much a song for each video it's now pretty that, much a song for each video. that's crazy that's crazy like what youtubers are out here doing a song for each video and it really helps tell the story i read something that said a good story with the right music becomes a perfect story and, and yeah. that's what you do you know what i'm saying so i think that is just genius do you do you do all the production do you have a production team do you record at home i, I know we got to kind of run through these real quick but like what is the music situation like now yeah so the music is um i record my music in here for okay. now and it's kind of hard to do it because but this is one big like community room and so i can only record when people aren't here yeah um so i record the music in this office um jay ruckers my producer pretty much does all the music i do have a couple people who stop in um 1995 right uh anthony cruz he stops in nice. um obed padilla he stops in nice. um you know a couple other producers I've, montel fish has done a couple tracks and yeah. um um dom dom marcel right he's okay. done a couple tracks um but um for the most part I, i'm doing it here i really want to put together like kind of like a best of yeah uh believe fatherhood stuff that i've already put out Man. and just kind of you know repurpose it make it really nice do a vinyl or something like that you, you, you have uh, to and the reason i say you have to because i have to dig around to find these dope jewels of songs that you have and you know yeah. and it's great but it's like man i never heard this man i never heard this it's like oh this is dope too like why isn't he putting this like in a more upfront street kind of way bro like, i get bro, it. because <laughs> bro because i you, here's the problem with me and music man like i have a really like weird relationship with music because i'm like it's something that can become so prideful and such yes. an idol yeah you know what i'm saying you yes. watch people be like man i'm better than him yeah you know what i'm saying like and it's it's like i can't i can't turn it off oh, so I, I like it's like easter eggs like i hide it in different places <laughs> like i'll i'll just put something on patreon and never put it out i'll put something on soundcloud and leave it <laughs> private like i'm super weird when it comes to the music man but you're like the fourth person in the past 48 hours who have told me like yeah. please put out more music you know yes, what i'm saying bro. so 
I'm that definitely going to do it. I'm That's definitely going to do it. But I really want to um, I want to build a set where I can record because I just don't want to do music. I want to put a video out, too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and so I want to build a set that that, uh, you know, supports that. So I'm, oh. I'm going to do it, man. I'm going to do I, it. Bro. I heard you say um, in an interview with Ruslan, you said you felt guilty about uh, well, not that you felt, but at some point it was like you felt guilty about being paid for it, too, especially as like a Christian hip hop artist. Like you felt like, man, I, I'm dope. I'm good. But people were like, well, oh, you, you're getting paid for it. And then now that that brings no. a, a unique demographic or a unique something. Nah, um, nah. it was it was about like. The more you say Jesus, the more paid, <laughs> the more opportunity you get. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And so wow. it felt like Jesus was a bar. What? you know what i'm saying no he was it a ticket like, he was a meal yeah, ticket. Like a ticket like i could make a turn up record about jesus and then i'll get a book at the youth group and then i'll get paid and then you know so i'll do a video and you know what i mean like nah like it felt kind of uh, like yeah, yeah yeah you know what i mean and so I, I couldn't i couldn't exist in that world man and wow i'm so glad that i'm 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 on this side because i feel yeah. so much more free wow. and the expectation is not as high like man. you know what i mean for me man. to be trying to lead people to jesus every 16 bars like that is wow. a lot of pressure that's you know a mean? lot of pressure bro <laughs> and so i get to i get to confront people in a way that addresses their daddy issues wow which ends up addressing their god issues wow you know what I'm which saying? addresses the big daddy issues that's exactly crazy. That's you know what i'm saying lovely, so god is good man i'm very fortunate dope dope well hey we want to be super respectful of your time it's actually 10 o'clock on the dot man i can't thank you enough for coming on this